Welcome back and in this video we are continuing our discussion on the articular cartilage the biomechanics of cartilage we understood that there are three types of cartilage and we found out that our discussion is to be on the articular cartilage and in today's session we will be discussing about the material properties of articular cartilage in GTL as well as the failure of articular cartilage and we'll wind up the discussion on articular cartilage material properties of articular cartilage material properties of articular cartilage we saw in our discussion there are three types of cartilage we defined the cartilage we studied what are the composition of cartilage we saw that it is made up of gags it is made up of proteoglycan it is having higher neuronic acid it is having a brush like pattern and finally it has having different four layers and and again we found out that it is made up of a biphasic component remember biphasic component now the material properties can you guess what is the composition of articular cartilage we discovered that articular cartilage is made up of a biphasic component or it is biphasic in nature that means it is made up of two different components that is a solid component and a fluid component right a solid and a fluid component now let me ask you for example you have a wardrobe in your room how can you define what properties does it have you can define the property you can define its features or its capabilities or its particular peculiarities only when you know what substance make it whether it is made up of wood whether it is made up of steel whether it is made up of multi wood it shows its resistance it shows how it can last how long it will last and how it can withstand some damages similarly the material properties of the articular cartilage depends upon the composition of the articular cartilage it depends upon both the solid and as well as the fluid component right it depends upon the solid components property as well as the liquid components property and thus we need to discover or dig into the solid and liquid component properties that solid matrix and liquid properties or fluid component right in solid component we have lot of properties we had already discussed in bond that is the Young's modulus the Poisson's ratio the bulk modulus the shear modulus and aggregate modulus but in cases of uh, the articular cartilage we take this modulus that is the aggregate modulus that is the aggregate modulus right in case of articular cartilage we take this one that is the aggregate modulus not the Young's modulus right and what do you mean by aggregate modulus any guess aggregate modulus defines the stiffness of an articular cartilage at a particular stage when at equilibrium when all the fluid flow in it has been stopped Rhea, can you guess it? That means you know that the articular cartilage is a solid and a fluid component mix. That means always there is the fluid flow inside the articular cartilage. We define aggregate modulus only in a circumstance when this articular cartilage is at equilibrium. For equilibrium, there should be a balance. That means the fluid flow should be stopped. So aggregate modulus is the stiffness. It's a stiffness itself. Solid components property stiffness. Uh, it's a stiffness of articular cartilage when all the fluid component in it has stopped the flowing and it is at equilibrium. Or aggregate modulus is the stiffness of articular cartilage at equilibrium when all fluid component flow in it has been stopped. Right? Yes. Now what is the benefits of aggregate modulus or what can we interpret from aggregate modulus you know that when aggregate modulus is higher when aggregate modulus is higher it shows that the, the object can withstand a greater compressive force that means aggregate modulus if it is having a high value the articular cartilage can withstand greater greater 
compressive load or greater compression and greater deformation if aggregate modulus is less the compression or deformation of the articular cartilage will be higher clear and now we have a common value for the aggregate modulus which is all about right uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 megapascal right which is about 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 megapascal for our understanding we can equate it to Young's modulus and it would come around a value of 0 0.45 to 0 0.80 megapascal. All right. So if we equate it to Young's modulus, which we used in Bond for better understanding, we can understand that this value comes around 0 0.45 to 0 0.80, which is almost a same values. Right. But here we have to note that the aggregate modulus or Young's modulus of steel is 200 GPA right whereas this uh, aggregate modulus of wood is uh, about 10 gpm so that's is the difference between inorganic and organic substance right yes but in the aggregate modulus of bone is how many gpm about 17 to 27 megapascal which we discussed in the uh, discussion on uh, biomechanics of bone if you haven't listened to that the link is given above and kindly listen to that so you have a better understanding so that's all about the aggregate modulus. Aggregate modulus is the properties of a solid component inside the articular cartilage. And that property is defined as the stiffness of the articular cartilage at equilibrium when all the fluid flow inside it is stopped. And if there is an increased aggregate modulus, that means less fluid flow or less fluid component in it and the equilibrium is reached fast. That means that object is having greater compressive stress or compressive ability, which ability to withstand the compressive force or compression. Whereas if aggregate modulus is uh, less, it shows that uh, less compression. Less compression means le more deformation. Therefore, aggregate modulus is also related to the deformation. If aggregate modulus is higher, then the deformation would be lesser. And if aggregate model is, uh, modulus is lesser, then the deformation R rate will be higher, right? And now we move on to the next properties of the articular cartilage that is the property of its a liquid component what can be the constant used to deform uh, define the properties of the liquid component any guess the property that is used or the constant that is used is permeability that property is the permeability right the permeability the properties of the liquid component or fluid is permeability permeability it defines or it denotes the ability of fluid flow permeability defines or denotes the ability of a fluid flow if permeability is higher the fluid flow through the component is higher if permeability is lower the fluid flow on the component is lower right so permeability defines the ability of a fluid flowing through the component. You know that articular cartilage is a game made up of biphasic component. Don't forget that. So that you can understand this. The permeability means ability of fluid flow. Now if the object is having higher permeability, the ability of a fluid flow in that is greater. Fluid flow is greater. When ability of fluid flow is greater, what happens? The deformation will increase. Right? When fluid flowing through that easily, the deformation will increase. If permeability is lower, fluid flow is decreased. Fluid flow is decreased. That means the deformation is less. So this has an inverse relationship. Aggregate modulus increased means it has less deformation capability. But if permeability is increased, that means the object is having greater ability or greater chances for deformation. We take our discussion to a step forward. Like in articular cartilage by bi our biomechanical studies, we found out that in periphery, you have an articular cartilage like this. You have an articular cartilage in a bone. For example, in femur, you have an articular cartilage over here, right? Let me draw it in a two layers. The articular cartilage will have a two layers. The first layer, let us call it as a um, what layer? The um, in peripheral layer which will be this one the periphery and this will be the inner layer or deep layer inner layer or deep layer 
we see that the uh, permeability is higher in the periphery that means the ability of fluid flowing is higher in the permeability in the periphery that means near the joint surface near the approximation of two joints the permeability is higher that means in periphery the permeability is higher whereas in deep zone the permeability of the articular cartilage is, is lesser this is what we apply in our biomechanical discussion and in common life situation in articular cartilage. This is the reason, one of the reasons why there is more damage in the periphery than in the central region of the articular cartilage. Right? Permeability also affects the rate of deformation. The rate of deformation. Right? If permeability is higher, that means the fluid can flow easily. When fluid go, uh, goes on uh, flowing easily, what happens is that equilibrium can be achieved fast. Equilibrium can be achieved fast. Such objects can go for greater deformation. Such objects can go for greater deformation. All right. So that is another importance of permeability. So permeability is the ability of a fluid flow through the component and permeability of an articular cartilage. If it is higher, that means the greater amount of fluid can flow, therefore greater deformation it can go. If it is lesser, the fluid flow is less and the lesser deformation. The permeability of the articular cartilage if the periphery is higher, that means fluid flow at the periphery or joint surface is higher, which is uh, one of the reasons for greater damage at the periphery. Whereas in the articular cartilage, at the deep zone, the periphery, a deep zone compared to periphery, what happens? The permeability is high, low, therefore fluid flow is low, right? Yes. And now uh, we have the um, uh, we have the applied aspect of the pathomechanics. What we have is uh, in osteoarthritis, what is happening? In the articular cartilage has a lower Young's modulus and higher permeability. Not Young's modulus, lower aggregate modulus and higher permeability. When the modulus is lower, you know that it can deform easily. When permeability is higher, it can deform easily. So that is the pathomechanics or that is the applied aspect which you have to write if you have an examination on this. Right? Yes. And uh, now we have to also know that uh, the permeability or the properties of the articular cartilage uh, also depends upon its uh, material composition. For example, if proteoglycan content in articular cartilage is higher, the stiffness is more. If, uh, what do you call, if um, the PG contents, uh, that is the proteoglycan, if GATS content, glycosaminoglycan content in the articular cartilage is higher, it will have greater stiffness. If collagen content is higher, it will have greater stiffness, but studies have not completely proved that, but still, when the solid component is higher, that means when the solid matrix is of high composition or high rate, the stiffness of the articular cartilage is positive, that is it increases, right? Whereas in the fluid matrix, that is in the fluid component, if it is higher, that is water inside the articular cartilage is higher, its stiffness is a negative, that is the stiffness decreases. So you just have to remember this. These are the material properties of articular cartilage, which you can define by two constants. That is the aggregate constant or aggregate modulus and permeability. And finally, we saw that the properties of articular cartilage in general, this is a summary of this discussion. This is the summary of this discussion. That means if solid matrix is higher, composition is higher then the composition stiffness is a positive solid matrix includes the proteoglycans gags right the collagen etc and when the fluid component means the water inside the articular cartilage the interstitial fluid inside the articular cartilage all this is going to decrease the permeability decrease the compression decrease the stiffness of the articular cartilage yes that's a discussion on the material properties of articular cartilage. Now, we have to move on to failure of the articular cartilage, which is a very common and heard. Thing. Now, we are moving on to a very small discussion to wind up the session on biomechanics. That is the failure of articular cartilage. The failure of articular cartilage. Right? Uh, it is very important as far as our daily practice is concerned only because uh, by understanding the mechanism of failure of articular cartilage we can interpret the treatment strategies and uh, the modification that we can adopt right 
in uh, failure of articular cartilage or we uh, know that um, one of the major thing that we hear about articular cartilage is uh, there is fibrillation of articular cartilage there is fibrosis of articular cartilage there is wear and tear of articular cartilage right we know that this sort of things happens especially in osteoarthritic knee or any other conditions osteoarthritis of hip etc but do you think that uh, whether it is a biological phenomenon or it is a mechanically driven so most of this are mechanically driven process right most of these changes in the articular cartilage are mechanically driven rather than biological causes and mechanically driven then we need to know the biomechanics of it how is it caused right there are two type of forces that results in articular cartilage damage one is a tensile nature force one is the tensile nature the second one is um, uh, the second one is a shear force shear force or stress you can call it more easily stress the tensile stress and shear stress these are the two common ways in which that failure of the articular cartilage can result in what do you mean by tensile force huh? you know what is the tensile strength the tensile force huh? tensile force of an object is uh, an elongation force right uh, an elongation force so such a load such a compressive load such, such not such a compressive not compressive load such a distractive load can result in various changes in the nature of the articular cartilage but when we examine the tensile loading of the articular cartilage we see that um, the tensile loading of the articular cartilage or the ability to withstand the tensile load decreases from deep zone to the periphery of the articular cartilage this is exactly because of the solid and the biphasic nature of the articular cartilage where we saw that some of the properties decrease from deep zone to the periphery the periphery is weak so periphery is weak and as a result of that the ability to withstand tensile force is very low in the periphery and also the ability to withstand tensile force is also determined by one another factor that factor is the loading strategy how fast or how slow the articular cartilage is loaded when the articular cartilage in human body is capable of withstanding a greater amount of slow loading but when the loading is fast and repetitive it can result in the damage of articular cartilage do you know how far the loading can go a loading of about 67800 approximately 67000 cycles is fine for the articular cartilage there is no problem that is going to happen because of that tensile loading but if it is increasing greater than 97200 or 97000 cycle this is just a reference figure right the articular cartilage destruction can be higher that means in normal circumstances and in normal slow loading and repeated cycles the articular cartilage can be stand. but if it increase manifest if it is in goes on increasing and increasing ultimately it can lead to failure of the articular cartilage which is characterized by fibrillation of the articular cartilage wear and tear of the articular cartilage etc cracking of the articular cartilage etc so the summary of this discussion that is articular cartilage can be damaged by tensile force which is an elongating force in the nature normally this damage is limited normally the damage due to uh, tensile strength of the articular cartilage is less the tensile strength of the articular cartilage is a function of the material properties of articular cartilage that means due to that solid composition and the biphasic model the articular cartilage has a high tensile strength the tensility decreases from a, decreases from a center zone to the periphery that means periphery is having less ability to withstand the tensile forces now the tensility um, the tensile force is a dependent on the loading capacity when fast loading is uh, uh, impacted on the articular cartilage it can lead to lead on to faster damage and uh, breaking cracking and fibrillation of the articular cartilage right the second one is the shear force right we often think that the articular cartilage is a compressive one okay it's an incompressible one not compressive it's an incompressible one when it is at equilibrium when it is not in equilibrium when fluid is for say flowing through it it's compressible but uh, when it is at equilibrium but uh, when it is so when it is at equilibrium what actually happens it is incompressible in nature it is becoming incompressible but the load is going to increase right 
when load is going to increase uh, let us look at uh, one figure when it load is going to increase in the articular cartilage right you have here your articular cartilage hmm? it cannot expand it cannot it, it cannot get compressed it is in its uh, um, equilibrium state now still the force is going to act on it like this from all directions so it is not able to compress it is not able to get deformed what can happen this cartilage can exert pressure on the surface on which it is in contact that is the subchondral bone right we studied about that we learned about that the subchondral bone so this cartilage would ex express the stress on the subchondral bone so what happened to the cartilage it can only go for lateral displacement if at all there is a possibility so if at all there is a possibility cartilage cannot go for compression or elongation it can go for only lateral displacement so here the decompressive force acting from the cartilage and from the bone creates the shear force lateral force the shear force between the cartilage molecules so the shear force that is acting on the cartilage is at the cartilage bone interference is at cartilage bone interference the interference rare between cartilage and bone that is where the shear force is maximum and it can ultimately lead on to the damage to the cartilage right so whether whether it is a tensile nature force or compressive nature force it can lead on to the damage to the articular cartilage tensile nature may lead to compression at the periphery this may lead to compressive nature at the subchondral bone and cartilage interference bone cartilage interference plane so this is how we wind up our discussion on biomechanics of cartilage. We must focus on what is cartilage, types of cartilage, functions served by cartilage, and the composition of cartilage where you have to see about the proteoglycans, the gags, the hyaluronic acids, and so on. Then we step on to the different layers of the articular cartilage, and finally we move on to the mechanical properties, which is very important where we focus on the biphasic model of articular cartilage, which is very critical for our discussion and from that biphasic model we went on to the material properties and then we saw that material properties is a property of solid and liquid components and we examined that in the terms of aggregate modulus and Young's modulus right and at the end of the discussion we went on to the failure of articular cartilage which is characterized by fibrillation wear and tear as well as cracking of the articular cartilage and two reasons one is the tensile stress on the articular cartilage and shear stress on the articular cartilage and can lead on to problems within the articular cartilage to wind up you need to go on with the osteoarthritis you have to specify what are the changes that is happening in the osteoarthritis the periphery is going for what are the changes due to tensile force the um, center region or the deep region is going for shear force comp and periphery is having a low aggregate modulus and low high permeability which will lead on to greater deformation of the articular cartilage and deformation of the articular cartilage is characterized by fibrillation wear and tear and fibrillation, wear and tear, as well as cracking. So you need to specify what happens in osteoarthritis. In few words, uh, what are the changes that happens in osteoarthritis? What are the biomechanical changes that happens in the bone? With that, we wind up the session on the biomechanics of a cartilage, which is quite important. And if you have any more uh, clarity, if you need any more clarity, just get back me through my comment box. And if you like the video, don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed.